Okay, I'm Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. Um, in a previous video, we talked about holding uh, some variables of a gas constant and changing some variables of gas. Make sure you watch that other video for that. We're gonna use that same simulation here, um, same kind of rules. Rules are, we've got the four variables at our disposal, we, the pressure, the volume, the temperature, and the amount of gas that we have. So with the simulation, we're going to now look at another relationship. So we're gonna hold the number of particles constant, um, and then what we're going to do here is we're gonna to attempt to hold our pressure constant. Um, the pressure being constant now, um, and the way that this particular relationship is going to be set up uh, that we're going to be looking at is going to be our volume is going to change and our temperature is going to change. Those are the two ones that we're looking at. What happens to volume as we change temperature? So our temperature is going to be our independent variable and our pressure, I'm sorry, our volume will be the uh, dependent variable. So let's see what happens. Remember the number of particles aren't changing and the uh, we're trying to hold the pressure constant. So let's see what happens when we heat this sucker up. As we heat this up, right, if we had a sealed container, we would think, oh, you're heating a sealed gas container. That's bad. Um, but what we've done is given ourselves a container that can get bigger or smaller as we add or decrease the uh, heat. Add heat, decrease, or remove heat. So if we add heat, right, and we've now increased the temperature of the container to be 433, 433 Kelvin, we held the pressure constant because we said we were gonna hold pressure constant. What happened to our volume? Well, our volume got a lot bigger. If we go the opposite direction and we decrease the temperature uh, quite a bit to this 174, it's pretty dramatic. We see that the volume changes. The volume has to change in order for the pressure to be constant. And that is, therein lies the relationship in your book about Charles Law. Charles Law is going to be measuring temperature changes and then what's happening to your volume. Um, again, your temperature is your dependent variable, your volume is your independent variable. What happens as you increase temperature? Well, as you increase temperature, as we saw in that simulation, the volume of your container got bigger and vice versa. This is known as Charles Law and it's telling us that volume and temperature are directly proportional to one another. As one goes up, the other one goes up in a very linear, highly predictable fashion. So we've now investigated a number of our scenarios. Let's do one more.